Good evening. Welcome uh, to another Just Trains uh, YouTube stream, and it's another route preview. Um, really excited to be showing you this one. It's uh, it's really it's been a long time obviously in the works and uh, highly anticipated by a lot of people. It is uh, finally time for us to um, preview Buxton Peak Forest. Um, it's been in development for oh god how long now? Maybe eighteen months, maybe a little bit less probably. About it's definitely been over a year um, in in the development line. Um, but we are pretty much at the hur final hurdle. Um, obviously tonight it's the showing, and we'll be giving you information on when we're going to be releasing prices and all that jazz as well. Two scenarios are in the line. Um, we're not going to run the full scenarios fully because some one runs into Manchester. And then the other one runs, I think, down past um, Romilly. But we're, what we're going to do, we're going to do a Buxton up to Hazel Grove. So we're going to show that section of the route. And then we're going to do a freight scenario. So we're going to do a passenger and a freight. So we, you, you are going to see the whole of the Peak Forest route tonight. Um, <clears throat> is it quiet? How's that? It should be quite loud because I'm on the big microphone tonight. Um, let me know if it's not. I can always tweak. But it should be fairly loud. Um, I'm looking at the volumes at the minute. It's looking pretty normal. Um, but yeah, let me know if it's uh, if you need any more adjustments. So we'll load up the first one. We're going to do class 150 for now. Uh, we're going to start at Buxton with this and run up as far as Hazel Grove. And then we'll head over to the um, Dowlow, Hindlow branch and do a run down there and along through Peak Forest, Tunstead and all that area up as far as Chinley Curve. <coughs> It's very quiet, is it? Okay. Uh, hang on, let me have a look, see what's going on. Very bizarre. It shouldn't be that quiet. Is that okay? I've got people saying it's not and people saying it is. We'll see how it goes against the um, the train in a second. I can always... Well, that's as far as I can really take my microphone because it won't go any further. Without it peaking. So once this one loads up, we'll get on underway. So... Hope everyone's well. Uh, it's been know, about a month since our last one. So the last stream we did was the um, update to the Hamburg U1 route. Um, hope you're enjoying that one. Excellent. I can see it sounds good now. Fantastic. We got there. <laughs> so there's always a little uh, change in stuff to audio. Sometimes updates come through and it always seems to mess with things. It's a it's a pain. But it's not. That's good. Brilliant. Um, there's been uh, some other updates as well. Um, not not just to Hamburg. There's been some updates that have gone out. Um, one for Wessex. So if you've got the Wessex route, um, the Southampton to Bournemouth route, there's been an update that's gone out just recently for that. Uh, there's also been a update to Southwestern Expressways again. That's not as a major update. That's just been a. a f there's a few changes in the common library that's uh, gone through, and um, the addition I think of the uh, the signalling document waiting for that. There's going to be some updates for Sheffield to Derby um, very, very soon. Um, I believe they didn't go out today, but I think the plan is to get them out tomorrow uh, in readiness of Buxton Peak Forest. And I think there's a Hope Valley one coming as well. So keep your eye out if, uh, on your emails and stuff for all that. Uh, and obviously um, do grab those updates because you will need them if you are um, planning to purchase this route. Um, Sheffield Derby's one is a compatibility up, uh, compatibility update which comes with the track so you need to have that update anyway uh, but I'll give you some more of that information later on so Buxton we are here so I'll just take you for a quick look around the station and we'll uh, have a nice little drive down the line um, quite a nice little rural branch is this one up down to Hazel Grove there's a nice number of stations um, variety of speed changes as well um, some actual some slow running and then some higher speed running up there as well so it's a good mixture and some absolutely fantastic scenery as well part of the old station that's obviously still in, intact used to have a as far as I'm aware there used to be actually be a main roof down on this platform and there used to be another station as well which is somewhere hidden in here so the old Midland platforms not there anymore. I think even since like the, the era of the route setting, that these platforms I think have actually gone. I believe. Um, I think it's made way for developments, but yeah, these were two platforms. So you had the LNWR, which is the one that still exists today, and then you had the book, uh, other one for Buxton, which was the Midland. So it used to be an absolute hive of activity. 
There used to be a TMD in the back of here as well. That's uh, long since gone. Uh, before that went before this era as well. So a lot of changes at Buxton. But yeah, there's some uh, really nice uh, bits and pieces to go and have a look at in this one. I like this little fella. <laughs> All bits and pieces made into um, basically bits of railway parts. Like there's no signal up there. There's all sorts of bits of bob. Interesting. But yeah, all sorts. Let's get in the cab and get set up. Good morning, driver. Today you're going to work this pair of Class 150 slash 1s to Manchester Piccadilly under the head code of 2 Bravo 05. Prepare your train and allow the passengers to board in time for the 0702 departure. Uh, be sure to consult with the F1 briefing for any details on stopping patterns as this service is not scheduled to stop at all stops. Uh, good evening, Jack. Gareth, um, Gamer Tez. Uh, Josh Lake, Adam Hay, Gareth Ball. Uh, good evening again. That's twice I've said hello. <laughs> uh, Power Flower and uh, Trains and Planes. Good evening. Evening, Robbo. Nigel. Phil. Uh, Mike Dennis. Good evening. Matthew as well. Phil Seven, the Great British Railwayman. Scott is under just flight, I presume. So good evening, Scott. Um, who else have we got? Team No Sugar, and anyone else who is here as well. The landmark on the hill. Uh, where are we? Good question. I have got the information somewhere. <laughs> you, you've caught me on the spot here because I, off the top of my head, I have not got a clue. Um, of what it actually is. I will find out for you though. There's a couple of things. There's a Palace Hotel. That one's obvious because it's got the name on the top of it. So there's another landmark there. I'm not sure if it's like a spa building or something. Like a Victor something Victorian. There's a few bits and bobs around here. There's that one as well. There's a few specific landmarks that were modelled in here. You've caught me right off the, off the bat there. <laughs> I have got the manual though to be fair. It is in the manual I'm most certain. If I can find it. Let me get the train set up on all the, the goosey gander. Right. Put those on that side. And we need to put Manchester on here. That's that. Now, where did I save the manual? That is the good question. Uh, I'll find it, because I have got it somewhere. It's Buxton Spa. Someone's put it in the chat the same year job. Hello, Matt Hancock. How are we doing? GJ Double Z, good evening. Jake B, good evening. And on right as well. Uh, Jeremy's Train Show, good evening. I'm going to spend... A good number of the uh, amount of time, so I'll say, out of the uh, cab as well, just so you can see what's going on. A nice new number of uh, semaphore signals is also an interesting one as well, like this one, for example. Interesting. Um, post arrangement. So we're going to be uh, utilising these lines later on, uh, the freight lines, uh, so we'll focus them uh, later on, books and box here and the URS sidings on the right hand side, this is where the freight comes in, runs around and goes back the other way. We're, we're just as excited as you guys are for getting it out there. Um, you know, there's a lot of excited people for this one. Um, and a lot of people have asked for it over the years as well, so... It's finally, it's finally coming. At route extension length in total is approximately about 25 miles uh, in track um, as well, so... Though not a large ex extension, it's, it's rather um, interesting the way it works as well. When, if you look at the track arrangement, if you, what we're focused on is this section here. So there's Chinley. 
and then the line joined back up here at um, Hazelwood. So if I just pause a second, so we're traveling this lower line where my mouse is going at the minute, and it crosses over and back over again over where the tunnels are, and Buxton's where my head is currently. Uh, the freight line goes around this way where my mouse is running at the minute and it curves um, where the old junction used to be where it would continue on towards Matlock. So basically, the, you see where Matlock is on the Derwent line? Is that, that section is obviously the part that's not there today. That's now the uh, the Monsell Trail. So the line continues back round on itself and then runs up through Tunstead, uh, Peak Forest, and Great Rocks and all that lot. And then it runs back up to Chinley, joins up with the Hope Valley. So it's quite an interesting array of lines and the way it's all set up this week this week Jake it's all looking good I'm not drinking beer by the way I'm, I'm, I've got a monster <laughs> I'm behaving myself the Britannia Hotel and Spa that's the one yeah Britannia was in my in my mind and I didn't want to say Britannia because I got it wrong You've got a current list of eight scenarios planned to build for this route. Excellent. It's nice to see that people are already getting ideas together for what they want to build and make for the route. It's really nice to see. Rolling rules in this uh, section. The difference is when we go around the freight line in a bit, very very high steep like rock cuttings as well so it's a it's a totally different contrast from this part there's plenty of tunnels as well no we don't jake we don't <laughs> not on the school night <laughs> so where are we calling that um so we're going to skip dovols but we don't call there but we'll have a look when we go through um chapel on the frith Welly Bridge, Furnace Vale, Newtown, um, which is New Mills Newtown, which is on the other side of the bank. So where the Hope Valley is, and I'll show you this when we get there, you can actually see across the Hope Valley. It's quite uh, cool. Um, you've got um, Disley, uh, Hazel Grove, uh, Wood Call, and uh, Woods Moor, Davenport, Stockport, and Manchester Piccadilly. We're going as far as Hazel Grove just for this evening because we're focusing on this route. Uh, we don't need to focus on the Hope Valley because everyone's seen that. So that is that. For this extension to work, you do need to have Sheffield to Derby, um, as that's where the main route comes from. But you also deem, uh, you do need to have um, the Hope Valley extension. It's an extension to that route. You'll notice the uh, the foliage as well. Um, so the route now sports updated foliage. Um, we um, we work with uh, Ash Burgess. Um, who worked on the VP tree pack, which was, was the old trees. Uh, he updated his tree pack uh, quite recently, and we um, were lucky enough to work with him and seal the deal to allow this pack to be put into the common library and uh, update the foliage so it's new trees and bushes, which did look absolutely superb um, on this. Oh, this is uh, Dove Hole Station. Uh, I don't think there's many trains actually stop here, um, to be honest with you. I'm not sure how many do call here in the day, but not all uh, do call here. Again, there's all sorts of the de uh, the detail that you expect on these routes. So there's all sorts of bits going on here, like sort of stuff like that. Like, there's just something out of service there, which looks to be... I wonder if that's like a, a, a public calling point where you can find out where your train is. Tannoy speakers and stuff, and little bracket mounts, and all the usual posters. Um, just trying to see if there's any other little quirky bits and pieces that I can find for you. Little signage and stuff like that. So the route was uh, developed for us by um, Nick, who did the Hope Valley as well. So the, the same style of route building throughout. We are just slowing down for the 45 mile hour drop. Um, it then actually drops to 20 as well. 
things where it goes into there's a tunnel that it goes through which is rather tight on the curve Samuel Smith good evening how are you doing busy time for all sorts of train simulators at the minute uh, Nigel there's all sorts going on um, at the moment which can only be a good thing for anyone that's into train simulation Lots of exciting and interesting things coming. So you've got uh, this tunnel here, which is a bar. Is it Barmore? So this is Barmore Clough Tunnel, which is 111 yards. Um, now I've been down here before, and I remember driving past it. On this is the, I think it's day six there. When I came back from Christ Tramway Museum about a year or so ago, I remember seeing all this. Not really taking much notice of what it was at the time. It was sort of in the period of when this route was sort of getting geared up to be built as well. So I was sort of like, I was taking a bit of notice, not not fully really understanding what was what in the area. I just have a little bit, little factual information for you. This used to be a um, used to be a tram road that ran down here. So this is uh, in this little stone wall area. Whilst we were doing the read up, like the manual spec and stuff, we. Uh, we did a run through the route, me and Mark, and we sort of started finding bits and pieces out. So we, we learned that this used to be an old tramway that used to go off down here. There's an old bridge and stuff that used to go off around the back of here. And I think, it, to be fair, it actually went to the back of the um, Semex area somehow. Gradient at the minute is dropping down at 1 in 58. Hello, Prof. Good evening. Yeah, 1 in 58 currently, uh, Nick. Good evening as well. So it's actually you do need to be on uh, on point with the brakes. So it's it's fairly steep. Yeah. So depending on what you're driving, um, get them brakes in. The amount I've got step two in it, you see how sort of long it's taking the speed to come down. where the 20 kicks in. This is Eve's Tunnel. So this is where the tight curve comes in. So you're still going down at 1 in 58, so you don't want to be coming off the brakes. I just sort of, that you just feather them on and off. Which is just step, step one and then release through it. And you hold it nicely. About a mile to chapel on the frith. Yeah, we, we can't wait to um, to explore that area with you guys and tell you what we're doing. Unfortunately, we're, we're back in that situation where we can't uh, do anything at the moment. <laughs> we have to um, bide our time and, and sit tight and beaver on doing what we're doing. But as soon as we're allowed to, you'll, you'll know about it. So that once you come out of the tunnel, it, uh, it opens back up to 45 and then to 50 quite soon after. So if you you can actually see over in the distance over there, I think it's um, sort of goes over that way towards Chinley. And around the back of the hills over here, it comes into the um, Hope Valley, where you sort of the merge up together. So if I show on the map, currently we are. Yeah, so if we look to our right is where Chinley Triangle is, so somewhere under here is the other line. Um, it, it crosses underneath somewhere. Here. So that's the freight line, which comes out of the, the rather long tunnel, which um, I can't remember what the name is off the top of my head. We'll go for that in a bit, but it runs for about two, or so, two to three miles, that one does. It runs right underneath everything. And then there's another little one under here, which is uh, Chapel. And it runs off over in that di di uh, direction to the, uh, the triangle. Then eventually the two lines come quite close to each other and you uh, you do actually get to see the other track. 
So if you're quite clever in your scenario creation and you actually were looking up with the timings, you actually may be able to have it where you can see a train going in the distance. Which would be quite nice to see. Evening, Robin. How are we doing? Yeah, yeah, it's got... Tread breaking was a new um, addition, weren't it, to the uh, to the stock? So you've got to be uh, on the ball with it. Because the, the brakes kick in, don't they, later on? They sort of they, they grab more tighter as the speed comes down. I think that's my understanding of it. I think I've got that right. Good evening, Joe. Up to the uh, usual high standards that I see. Really impressed, guys. Can't wait to give it a drive. Thank you very much for the kind words. We, we can't wait to see... Um, your videos. <laughs> we know you like to do your videos, so we'll look out for them. And if you're not watching what you're doing, you're coming too slow. Because you come off the you come off the gradient onto a, a level, sort of a level, and it drops down again after the station. This is a chapel on the frith. This is the capital of the peak, so the sign says. Hanging baskets. All sorts of, uh, again, posters and signs. So, change here for the Eccles Pike and Coombs Reservoir. Even Gary, no, we are just YouTube only now on the Just Trains channel. Other lots of custom assets for the quarries. There most certainly is. Um, there's a it's a mixture of custom assets and there's also some bits reused from other um, bits and pieces off the middle of mail out, which have been managed to be used and fitting quite nicely. But there is a, a good number of custom assets made for the main parts themselves. We'll have a look at those in a bit on the second scenario. You see the Coombe Reservoir just over in the distance over there, which I believe is that one. Quite a, quite a large one. So the line skirts around. Yeah, the, basically, the um, it was easy for us to consolidate it onto YouTube, mainly because when we do a Twitch stream, the footage only lasts on there for about a week or so, and then we, it's gone. And then it's a, it's a pain to try and download it and then upload it again. Um, so it's just easy to do the streams onto YouTube because the footage is always there then. We don't lose it and people can just come and watch whenever they want. And also it's, it's easy for me to keep on top of it all in one place. Because sometimes, like when you connect all the channels up into um, one onto the uh, the restream, sometimes one of the channels could drop off, and we could have technical issues, and it's, it becomes a bit of a headache trying to figure out then why that's gone and stuff. So it was just a lot easier to run it on one uh, in one place, and this was it's just a no-brainer to do it on there because, as I say, we don't lose the footage; it, it just stays there like a normal video. It just it goes into our live tab. So if you if you ever want to come back and watch these streams, you just have to go onto the channel and then click the live section, and all, all our live video feeds are on there. You, know, you can just find them all in one place. Not a problem, Panther. As there's any questions anyone needs to ask, feel free to chuck them into the chat, and we'll uh, answer as much as possible.
interesting little fact for you. Class 142 Pacers were banned on this line. They weren't actually clear to run down there. Which I actually didn't know until we were making scenarios. Because so I was looking for a scenario to do with a pacer. And turns out they didn't come down here. Not sure why. So currently dropping at 1 in 60 down to uh, Willowbridge. So you can actually, it's that steep that you can actually see it on the hood, like how it drops down and it levels out at the station. And it drops down again. <laughs> so it levels at the stations and goes back down again. A little roller coaster. Vulcan Productions, good evening. How are we doing? It must be some gauging issues or something like that, yeah. I can't think of what else it would be, why the pace would be banned from coming down here. To be fair, it's probably down to the fact of the gradient going up the hill towards Buxton. It's probably too much for the pace to handle. <laughs> Potentially. Uh, any work being done with the Manchester Stockport to help with the OM crash? Uh, at the moment, we've still not found any um, thing to solve that, unfortunately. It's something that we keep looking into. Um, well, the scenarios on this route, on this extension, come through Manchester and there's there's been no issues in testing. We've had no reports of any crashing uh, on that. So, whether it's sorted itself out, we're not too sure. Uh, but everything seems to have behaved itself during testing, and we've not had a single one come back to us saying that they've, they've crashed in that area. So, fingers crossed. So, when is this being released? It is going to be released in the week, uh, later on in the week. I'll give you proper information later on. I'm just going to keep you keep you interested <laughs> where are we going going to um well this is going up as far as uh, manchester piccadilly but we're driving up to hazel grove and then we're going to swap to a freight scenario i think it's scenario related jake sometimes it can i think sometimes it can be due to the sheer amount of different requirements that might be put to a scenario um so if you try and be savvy with what you're using and not put tons and tons of different types of trains in if you can try and work it where it's quite cleverly sometimes can get around it that way as well an old uh, run down pub there bed and breakfast don't think they're going to be serving any bed and breakfast uh, services today though I'll just pause it for a second because uh, there's all sorts around here that can look at. let's have a takeaway There as well. Proper LNWR clock as well there. Evening Baz, how are we doing? Uh, so due to the steep gradients on the line 142s and 153s, are, oh it's 153s as well. Interesting. So it is it is gradient related. I can imagine that to be fair, because it's it, it's you have to really push it. When you're going towards Buxton, even in 156, you have to really be quite on the ball with the driving. Um, because it is it is steep, um, you've got to be on the mark really. There's all sorts. There's, everywhere you look, there's always there's something to look for. I mean, we obviously we're in TSW, so we've not been fully involved with this. We we did the scenarios me and Mark for this, so we've had a drive around and a little bit of a play with it, but properly like proper play wise, we've not been sat down constantly driving around on it, so. Even I'm still finding bits and pieces that I've not noticed before, like stuff, just little things like that, really. It's just 
the, the low night lamps and stuff like that and even just to a bus stop as well <laughs> it's just the simple things that just add to it it's really nice but yeah there's, a, there's all sorts of things to uh, go and find and see and explore Proper, the proper line, the freight bit. Yeah, we're, we're going to do um, from Dowlow. So we'll come down to the URS side and do the run round. Then we'll go around via Tunstead. So everything's going to be seen on the uh, on the stream tonight. It's quite a, it's quite a good one to do as a route, really, in terms of a showcase because the way that the scenarios work, you can actually everything can get seen in two runs. Obviously, rail tours come down here as well. I think steam tours have come down here as well, even recently from steam. So, this will be quite a challenge for you um, steam loco fans. Without a doubt. Ian George. Uh, before the SSD failure I had. Had a full scenario almost ready for release. We stretched from Manchester to Stockport to the limits and had no issues. That's, I mean, I, I've made scenarios for this route on my own personal side of things and I, I've managed to cram them and they've, they've worked. It's, I think sometimes you can be lucky or just sometimes you can be unlucky in that respect. It can also go down to your computer specs as well. Uh, at the end of the day. You've got to remember as well, Manchester is a very, very um, compact area. There's a lot going on in Manchester. You've got all the different lines going off, and you've got lots of assets going on. It's just got, it's one of the things you just need to take into account. Oh, they will bark. I might have a go myself at some point. I mean, I don't mind a bit of steam driving these days. I've managed to sort of tackle it a bit more head on. I have a bit more of an understanding on it, so I might have a, I might have to have a go. It might be something to uh, look into a future JT uh, stream as well, maybe. I'll have to have a practice, of course, first, just to make sure I can do it. <laughs> we don't want to see me fall now, do you? I mean, have a, have a bit of a failure. We've got the canal down to our right as well. This is Fergus Vale. I think from here you should be able to see the other line. So I'm sure I will just stop and have a look. So, if I go up there, you can see it. And I'm not sure if it's over here or a bit further up. Actually, it might be. It might be a bit further around. Oh, it's there. So there's New Mills Junction. So you can see the signal box, um, which is obviously the, the line runs off over into that that distance over there into the, uh, towards Manchester. The left line goes to, obviously towards over that viaduct to uh, Hazel Grove. So that's just how close we are. Oh, bless you. Uh, someone sneezed. Five six is going the other way. Well, actually, there's a one five six set and a one fifty. So, what one of the things that's been fixed in the common library, um, which came in through um, after the Wessex uh, route went out, is the level crossing barriers have been fixed. So, you don't hear the 
uh, the barrier's going down. You don't hear that clunking when you're driving from the cab now. That's that's been fixed, so you'll get that in the update. There's just so much going on. I mean, if you stop to just look around, you've got obviously rivers, canals, railways either side. It's uh, it's a very busy area, and obviously got the A6 as well. And, so much. Yes, it did. It's nice that uh, it's been sorted though, because it was it did get annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's a very busy area in terms of like all different uh, waterways and railways and roadways. There's just so much to see the the train spotter. Every way you look, it's such a photogenic route as well. It's just wherever you turn, sort of point your camera, you can find yourself finding something different each time. You can just just like perch yourself on top of the bridge there, or the rolling hills. As well, it was obviously it was Nick that put this together. He's got a really good keen eye for detail, as you can see. Uh, any three one nines? No, <laughs> not on our run. We're only going as far as Hazel Grove. Good evening, as well, Kev. How are we doing? There's also another station I don't think we'll call night, which is Middlewood. We will, uh, we'll see it though. Oh, it's the long running joke. It's the in joke we have. <laughs> I, I'm not too sure if 158s do actually um, still run to Buxton. To be fair, I'm not sure if it, these days it's just mainly 150s and 156s. Uh, yes. 769s, I have no idea on that to be honest. Someone else though in the chat most likely will know. Uh, I don't really know much about them and what they do or where they go. I know what they are, but I don't know where they really where they sort of run them. I've, to be fair, I've never even seen one. All I know is it looks like a 319 with an engine. <laughs> I think, to be honest, it is just literally um, 150s, 156s that are mainly running on here these days. Middlewood. I know that reference. It's Max and Paddy. I used to love that. <laughs> Thing is, though, even though that was based in Middlewood, it actually wasn't at Middlewood because it was on a single line track. I used to love watching Max and Paddy. <laughs> no, BG2, don't worry. Don't don't uh, apologise. No, it's, it's releasing this week. Um, our aim... Oh, there's, a, there's plenty of you here now. So our aim is uh, we're working towards this Thursday. That is what we're working towards. Price-wise, we are um, going to be uh, releasing this at twenty-one pounds ninety-nine. Is it Entwistle on the uh, Cl oh, it's on the Cliff Road line? Was it? I thought it was on. I wasn't sure if it was on the. Um, uh, it's, to be fair, it technically is on the Cliff Road route, isn't it? On the on the line between Darwin and uh, Bolton. Just 
So that is this Thursday. Uh, we are working towards and twenty one ninety nine um, is the price. Again, you do need to have Sheffield to Derby as the base, and then you also do require Hope Valley for this to work because it's an extension to Hope Valley. So Hope Valley assets are used in this as well. Along with uh, lots of new bits and pieces made specifically for this. Little speed bump. <laughs> this is Disley. Go explore. General FPS that I'm I'm seeing is around fifty while I'm driving this. Well, the FPS doesn't seem to show up on the screen for some strange reason. But on my top right, and see, it's 49 at the minute where I'm, where I'm sat. Which is it's pretty much sat all that way, all the way around on this run. Now, where, about where it loaded a little bit of a tiling. So it, it runs well. Uh, the Class 309 Flex Train, which this Manchester Buxton is going to be a test route. Interesting. That yeah, is interesting. It's Staley Bridge uh, to Southport, is it? Uh, oh, yeah, Shift and Z, isn't it? Where is it on there? My screen. Ah, there we are. Can you read that? Because obviously I'm running 4K, so I'm, I'm, I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll leave it there. Hopefully, can uh, you can see it? So we're dropping again now at 160. Can you not read that? Is it too small? <laughs> 54 it says at the minute. But it's got it's actually gone up. If this is obviously something up your street and you're waiting uh, to obviously purchase this, if you head to the in development page on our website, uh, go to the Books and Peak Forest Route tab. You can sign up to the email system on there, um, and then you'll get notified when it comes out, so you don't miss it. Random user, good evening. How are you? You can see it. Oh, excellent. It would probably be bigger if I weren't running in 4K. <laughs> uh, this is a um, Middlewood station. Going through. Change it for the Middlewood way. Pause it for a second just to have a look at. Used to be another line. I'm not sure what the line was. There was another line that used to cross over here uh, many years ago. So that these days that is the Middlewood Way. All the details are what to be fair actually is actually in the manual. What that um where it covered and where it went to and from. There was a junction somewhere around here as well, so you actually did have a triangle junction. Which you can see it marked out with that uh, mud track. So they used to link together. But so it's all covered in the manual. The manual I couldn't find off the off the back of me uh, back of my head. I can't remember where I saved it to. I've got it in an email, so I I'll try and get it loaded up for the next bit. Just so there's a few bits I can go through on there as well. I'm 
No standalone versions of this, George. It's just the extension only. Because it's an extension to um, Hope Valley anyway. And it needs Sheffield to Derby. No, there won't be a, it will not be a standalone for this. This Thursday, uh, Robo is where we're working for. Uh, Red Edge, um, so we are looking at getting updates out so that we're both definitely for Sheffield to Derby and Hope Valley. Um, you will need to get them updates. Obviously, if you've got the routes already, them too, you will get an email um, from our system when them updates go live, which I think should be tomorrow. We were trying to get them out today, but it got too late on in the day, so uh, I think we're working to get them out tomorrow. It will be before the route, because they have to be out before the route anyway, so as soon as you see them, um, get them get them installed ready. You'll be good to go. Which has, um, there's a few fixes as well, there's a couple of scenarios that got fixed through support last week, so there's uh, some fixes that came off them. Updates to Common Library is a big update in that and stuff, so. I know you root builders out there like to use the Common Library for your own projects, there's plenty of new bits and pieces for you to play with. So we are arriving at Hazel Grove, so that's the big green, this is the cord here on the right, so the big green bridge where after so many years of obviously waiting you get to play on this nice uh, bit of graded uh, track I, I absolutely love that the way how that's been laid how it how it banks down and drops to go under the bridge interesting the line the Hope Valley comes in so we're going to take this and leave this here and we're going to go on to the next scenario in a second what we'll do we'll open doors and let the train go off into the uh, into the distance, and we'll move on. It was Marple Mac and Bollington, was it? Ah, so it came off the Ro Rose Hill Marple. Evening, bug out. Oh, without a doubt, it probably would do well on TSW. Yeah. I think it's 6H52 we're doing next, which is a Dallow uh, Ashbury's. Um, so, uh, Moritz, so the Hamburg route with Steam, the route is with Steam. Um, it's been with them for a couple of weeks, I believe, now, um, while they do their checks. I think they found a couple of little bugs that had to go back to the developer who. Is now his ball court. So once he's done his fixes at DTG one, it will go back to DTG, and then we can move on from there. So the it, the wheels are in motion. It's uh, it's ongoing. So just bear with. It, it, it's happening. Same with the Wessex as well, so uh, Wessex is obviously going to be going through Steam as well, there's been work on going with that, so um, the work's been done with uh, the developer Jack, so it's gone to DTG I think now, so I think it's in their ball court as well. So we're just basically waiting in line to get through that process, so as soon as everything's obviously all good to go then, then things will happen, if you are waiting to purchase off Steam for that as well. I did say on the last stream I'd get that information out to you if I find out the answers, so we've got the answers. Right, so we will uh, move on to the next scenario. Uh, yeah, I believe we will end up. Pa we'll have to pass the update over to ATS, and then it will be down to them. Obviously, get everything up live. Um, you'd have to just hold on until that happens. Um, I will mention that tomorrow and just find out. Um, make sure that obviously goes across them because obviously. You guys will obviously need to get that update off there. If that's where you've purchased the route from. 
so yeah just sit tight on that uh, hopefully we'll be able to get that to them and it will go pretty quick hopefully uh, right so uh, we're not doing that way it's 6h for 2 and I'm going to quickly find that manual in my emails because I've got it somewhere Uh, well, you have to reinstall all the parts in order. I, I recommend that you do re obviously uninstall them. So you'll have to obviously uninstall every add-on. Back up anything that you might have made for it, like scenario-wise. Back all your scenarios up. Um, and then uninstall them through the uninstall manager. And then what I always recommend doing is going through your folders to ensure there's nothing left over in the Just Trains folder. If, you, if you're fluent with... Um, Deleting things out of folders. Sometimes there are odd little remnants left over in the installer uh, in the Just Trains folder, such as um, the MML folder, the Common Library. Um, I think there's the Hope Valley folder, MML NL, I think, or Knotts Lincoln, something like that, and Pete Boris. Anything like that relating to that route, just remove them, and when you come to reinstall, everything is fresh. Um, so there'll be all brand new stuff, and it'll be right um it probably will work still without but i just make sure i always remove it i've just been in that habit of just making sure everything's gone um so when you come to reinstall the boots reinstall them i always do it in order of the what when they release so it would be uh, sheffield derby derwent valley derby nottingham leicester airwash uh, barrow hill nottingham lincoln hope valley and then this um if you've got all of them, obviously, if you've not got all of them, obviously, just skip the ones you haven't got, if that makes sense. But, um, as long as you've got Sheffield, Derby, um, Pete, uh, Hope, and this, this section will all work as it is. If that makes sense. Right. Uh, good evening, driver. Please set up your cab and prepare for departure towards Buxton. Upon arrival, we will run around in the URS sidings. You'll need to ensure... The uh, manual point work is accurately prior to moving to. Right, so before we move off, uh, if I can show you on here quickly, let me just bring up the folder because I can. Ex it's easier if I show and explain this way uh, right if I find my nope yep there we go so in my in your railworks folder if you go to um, assets and then go to just trains and then in here you'll you'll you might find there's a the common library might be left in there Hope Valley, uh, MML, MML Lincoln, and then Peak Forest. So if any of them folders are left over when you've uninstalled everything, just remove them and then go for a fresh install after that. Um, you might find that some of them have already been taken out, but sometimes if anything's changed in the folder, if you've obviously added anything or tweaked anything yourself, sometimes something might be left over because it, the uninstalled system just removes everything that that installed. So if something's been modified, it'll it'll not touch it. If that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, if there, if, if you've got any issues, just there's always someone that can help. Even if if you're in the Discord communities and stuff and asking there, there's always someone that will help. And I'm in there as well. And if I see any, and sometimes see any issues or anyone's having any issues, I'll help out as well. So this is uh, Hindlow. This is the very top end of um, the branch. 
this line, I believe, used to it did, it did continue. It went on towards the um, high peak, um, towards Ashbourne, I think it was, many years ago. These days, it's the end, and a, just a head shunt down there for the running around your train. Yeah, basically, it's the similar. It's exactly the same as what it would uninstall and reinstall, uh, as per any of our updates or whenever we come to. Uh, release a new route or a new extension that is. So you've got part of one of the quarries there. Then you've got um no it always confused me. So you've got Hindlow and then this is I think Dowlow Briggs, which this part's got the signs that were in there. There's all, there's all sorts of bits and bobs going on there. You can obviously drive in here and, and up here. Vast quarries. So going forwards, the limit's five, and going backwards is three. These aren't track link size, by the way. These are just these are just assets. But just make you note: know, if you obviously are driving, you can uh, adhere to them speeds. So, another little cool fact is, when you're driving around the uh, the freight routes, you'll see that there's various like bits of water every so often, like little ponds or whatever, and they're all different colours. I learned that apparently they, they put dye into the water to stop people from drinking it <laughs> because of all the stuff in the area and obviously all the where the water runs down from and that. Apparently they put that into the water to stop people <laughs> to deter people from drinking it. You learn something new every day. Right, let's get set up. I'm not going to put the vigilance on because we'll be coming in and out of the cab, so. I want to tempt fate. at the point work is set which most of it is so on this one we are hauling a rake of loaded MEA uh, wagons obviously loaded with um, stone or whatever it is I presume it's stone it looks like stone quite a heavy train This is set in uh, 2005. Again, this is another scenario that comes with the route. Just one of a few of the freight runs. Uh, top speed for our working is 60 mile an hour. And this features a run round at Buxton. It's quite a slow section, this first bit, um, down into Buxton. I think max speed is like 20 mile an hour. It is a bit of a stagger. It's even slower when you first get going. It's like five down to the uh, ground frame. The train spotters, we are planning uh, for Thursday, uh, this Thursday coming as a release. Nigel, not a problem as well. Thank you very much as always for joining us. Take it easy. I'm not really familiar on this server, but I've only learned about this during the stream. I what Baz put in before.
the Tissington Trail. I've learnt something. So on the map, we are also down this bottom part, which if you look, we are the very, very south part of this extension. So we're going to go up to here at Buxton, run around in the sidings, and then we're going to go all around this way. Past Tunstead, Peak Forest, through the uh, rather long tunnel. And then we come out just up near uh, Chapel on the Frith area. And then we uh, are going to run up as far as the junction here. Is this the last JT release for TSC? For now. <laughs> In house, we don't work on uh, Trains and Classic now because we, we are moved over onto Trains and World. However, that's not to say that JT won't release stuff for Trains and Classic still. I can confidently um, say that it's not the last thing for TSC because there's, there's always stuff. <laughs> It's just that we, in-house, we don't build any funny. Mainly for Trains and Classic these days, it's uh, it's more like sort of external contractor work. The way we work on that. We work with other developers that they, they produce the content and then we go to publish and stuff like that. So there's always there's still always bits and pieces to always that can come. Basically, the best thing we can say is it, just keep around the development page, and something you might you might turn upon there one day, and something might pop up. You never know. We're going to stop at the ground frame, and then we will proceed. And you can see the speed goes up a little bit more. Uh, back up, to, it goes up to twenty. Then so there's no passenger operations coming down here. Although I believe there has been some rail tours down here over 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 the years. I was looking earlier on Flickr, and I did actually see a couple of uh, class thirty-seven rail tours that managed to get down here. You never know, someone might make it one day, Jake. As in anything, you never know until it, until it appears. You never know. An old uh, an old lamp that's been obviously the top's been cut off, <laughs> which is literally the bottom part of it. It's that sort of detail Nick goes through. So he's, he's he's found all these on videos and stuff, and all these little signs and stuff like that. These little stop balls that. They drop them down, so obviously they'll, they'll pull them up when you can't go in or out. And then you get stuff like that where there's a sound, nothing on it, it's just rusted. So you stop here, uh, you then op operate the ground frame before proceeding. We've technically already operated the ground frame. <laughs> we've we've skipped, the, uh, skipped the gun a little bit there, but never mind.
Uh, this is. We get this right because it, it's so confusing. These are all these. Even though cause it's all literally next to each other, it's, it's quite confusing. So you've got Dowlo Quarry at the top, and then you've got um, Hindlo Briggs. So there's all sorts in such a small area. If you type Dowlo or Hindlo, stuff normally sort of appears. I found a good amount of stuff. That's run up here over the years. This is the ground frame. It's been quite cleverly built, to be fair. I ensure the points are set uh, and then depart when ready. Even though it's NASA on top of it, I mean, these are the points off the actual points themselves. All that's happened is. When the points get laid, they obviously they put the points levers next to the the, the corresponding points. The, the actual levers have been dragged, and they've been put underneath this little asset, so it makes it like it's a proper ground frame that you can operate. I think there's another instance that's somewhere on the route as well. I think potentially it might be around Peak Forest area. It's a single line now, all the way up to Buxton. It's a bit like that, Robo. Yeah, literally the same same sort of uh, thing. You, you'd stop and operate. Cardiff and Nottingham. It's a long. That's a long route. <laughs> There's a lot of work would have to be involved to do that. Something like that you'd have to look at doing. That would be like in sections. You couldn't do that all in one big route. You wouldn't get... In the, in terms of like the quality and the amount of assets that you'd be looking to... You'd have to do that in like... Probably 60 mile sections or something. Or obviously from one point to another in like an important city. If, you, if that makes sense. You could do it on one bit, but then you probably won't get as many custom assets or the, the same quality. So, yeah, I agree, it would be nice to see. There's not tons of photos, but if you if you search through the years, there's old bits and pieces like it used to be class 37s that you run down here with the ICI hoppers, for example. You are slightly speeding, but only about a couple of miles an hour. So we are up to 20 miles an hour now. And we are also dropping down gradient, which is a 1 in 60. By Burton on Trent. Yeah, the, so yeah, the Montal Trail, uh, we will be seeing that where that obviously curves off in a little bit, which is uh, on here, uh, this area here, where the 
Blackwell uh, Mill curve is, so blind used to continue. These days, it's uh, I say it's the uh, it's the trail. A very popular walk cycleway. Not one I've been, uh, been to myself, but uh, something I would like to see. The only place in that sort of stretch of land that I've ever I've visited is Bakewell. And Matlock. Even though Matlock still exists in, in terms of railway. The Haitian one is two levers, one locks lever with use of a key, which is collected from the cupboard, which allows the actual point lever to be changed at it. I mean technically that one might not be quite obviously quite how it would be in real life, obviously there'd probably be more levers. They do it obviously like interlocks and stuff, but it's a cool little feature. So we've got another quarry here which used to, I believe, used to have a rail link. And then I believe, apparently, I think they've reopened the rail link down here more recently. I'm not sure what it's actually called this place up. In the area of this route it isn't the link is it in there. The uh, sort of pause second. So where we've just gone through this tunnel, we've literally cut through a mine. Not a, a mine, but a, it's not a mine. It's a quarry. <laughs> I'm just making things up here. But yeah, we've basically cut through where two halves of these uh, open quarries are. It's quite uh, interesting, really, how that has just stayed there. But they've obviously worked around it. Obviously got the buildings there. There was all sorts of um, lines all around this area. There was one around here somewhere that went off as well. Um, here. Somewhere. Where is it? There. So another line went off this way. I'm not sure if it was a railway line or a tramway, but there was a line of some form. It's obviously it's quite it's quite steep dropping down. Come for that cutting it. It joins up somewhere around here. I get another one lost to history. But yeah, there's a used to be a maze of track, tramways and railways. Not tramways as we know, like these days with like trams are over and why is it like used to be like the little internal tramway uh, systems, like horses or whatever. But I think it probably was a railway. I think this one. I'm not too sure where it ended up, but. I'm actually sure if it ended up at Whaley, uh, Whaley Bridge. There was, a, there was a line that joined up around there somewhere as well. They all sort of like went around and met up with each other again. They were just bypassing areas. A bit more of a direct link back in the days. Blackpool to Euston. That is a long route. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of work. That's a good... What? A couple hundred miles ish, nearly. If not, probably is about a couple hundred miles. It's a long run. A lot of work. Genesis Games, good evening, how are we doing? Welcome. About three miles to uh, to Buxton on this part.
Is it 250 miles? I didn't realise it was that far. <laughs> I know it's a long distance down to Blackpool, uh, from Blackpool to uh, London, though, because we, we did it a couple of weeks ago in the car. We, up, we, we drove up down towards near Watford. I'm good, thank you, Genesis. Hope you are. a mixture of this part of the line it, it cuts through a couple of little villages a couple of viaducts it just skirts through uh, the countryside it's nice nice chill section this although you do have to watch your brakes from time to time Freight wise, on this, um, like for this part of the route, over the years you've, you've got a good wealth of stuff you can run. Like, so you've got like class 60s, 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 um, I think 70s probably occasionally got down as well. I'm not overly sure how often, but I think 70s have done stuff down there up to Peak or Tunstead. Um, class 37s as well. You've got to go really sort of back in time. You had like I've seen pictures of peaks down there and twenties, like forty seven and all sorts of stuff. Depends how sort of far back you want to go, but the the beauty of this line is that we've got quite a lot in train sim now that covers down here and quite recently there's been a lot of more wagons that like, sort of cropped up into the train sim scene. Um, and a lot of them are actually good for this route. Whether the, the, the wagon developers out there have sort of planned it and sort of known because this route's coming, they've sort of like planned ahead and sort of like developed some wagons. Um, it's win win, really. So if you're into freight like I am, wagons are a great thing. <laughs> Especially for getting the right look of what you want to build. <clears throat> Yeah, definitely you could do it in parts, certainly true, I suppose. Uh, Genesis, in TS Classic, what heritage routes are there? Oh, God, there's all sorts. Oh, you've got like, West Somerset Railway, um, Keeflerworth Valley, there's um, Mid Norfolk, we've got Mid Norfolk, and I think West Somerset we've got on our site as well. Um, Bar Valley, I think, as well. I think Watercrest and stuff like that. There's, there's, that's just a few, but there is all sorts out there. I mean, there's some in Freeware that's a community as well, that are like heritage lines. You've already got something in mind on this already. I saw a virus. I actually started making a scenario just before the stream, so I've, I've put a base down for a, a Freeware scenario that I'm looking at working on. <laughs> I'm always on the, on the lookout for making scenarios. So I'm always building stuff. In my own time. Monty Burns, good evening. How are you? Uh, Laurie Cooper, yeah, Don Coffey has done some fantastic videos that cover all the middle and main line. O over the time that we've been building the middle and main line, we've used quite a lot of Don Coffey's cab rides as reference. Um, they they've been perfect. Uh, especially with these these quarry routes and stuff, they've been really perfect because they've come down here. Midland Railway, yeah, there's also there's that, there's tons of stuff uh, in the in the the older era still and heritage railways and that. There's a good variety if that's what you're into. Well, you stayed in a static caravan near the viaduct on the Dowlow Quarry Branch. Heard 66 is rumbling by, but never saw one. I presume here. <laughs> I found it. Yeah, some really, really high quality cab rides that uh, um, Don does on YouTube. 
if you've not been on the uh, on his channel, go and have a look. Uh, if you like your cab rides, and I find them quite good to watch at night. Like I just watch them. I watch them in bed, me <laughs> before like going going to sleep or whatever, and stick a cab ride on. Cause it, it provides a lot of uh, really useful information as well about areas and that history and stuff. It's not just sit there and watch it; you actually learn along the way. So especially like if you're a root builder and stuff, and you want to learn about what you're building, they're really vital, uh, quite important to know. Is that the one? Excellent. Uh, East Lancashire Railway is not in Trains uh, Classic, but the Keyfordworth Valley one is. So this this gives you evidence that this line used to be double tracked as well. If you go back over to this bridge, you can see where there used to be two two lines. And again, obviously the viaduct um, is wide enough to support two lines as well. Again, just on the FPS front, um, I'm not sure you can see it. Um, we're, we're sitting on about 61 FPS at the minute. It's just where we're looking. The back in the game, it drops when you get back in cavalry, it's about 45, 45 to 50. Which is more than playable, it's, uh, it runs well. allotments and stuff it's sort of now we're getting a bit more built up so we're getting closer to Buxton we're literally on the outskirts footpath onto that bridge it's not a road uh, woody field but it's a lovely area the whole area this area itself is lovely the Peak District is that this uh, weekend is it the Legends of Steam store? I've seen that advertised it looks like it. Um, it's like is it one different loco each day over that weekend? Looks like a decent, uh, a decent do. I do enjoy it. Oh, the weather stays nice. Well, this doesn't rain anyway. <laughs> you can see, we obviously now we're. Uh, Entering Buxton, so you can just see obviously there is the uh, spa building and palace. Are they all, all out together each uh, all together? Ah, right. I thought it was one specific one each day. I didn't realise they were all out together. That's cool. It's typical. It's the way it goes, isn't it, Jake? <laughs> Enjoy it though, either way. Pray for a miracle. It does sound like a good day. Looking, I've, I've got the day off, uh, but for the um, the diesel gala later in the summer. I've not done any slanks uh, diesel gala for a while. We normally do Keith Lewis Valley, but we've uh, we've changed it up this year. <clears throat> Wet and warm. Warm rain. It's all good. <laughs> so we're obviously going to be going back up that line in a bit. Heading to the right, we're going to go that way. So the interesting sort of like what used to be, so it used to be um, the Midland line used to come under this bridge and then go to the platforms down here. There's all sorts of stuff. Used to be, I think used to be a shed in here, some sidings as well. Um, and if you want to see what this area used to look like, if you've got trains in world and you've got the Peak Forest route on there and you come down here, you can actually see what this area actually once looked like. Um, so it's quite an interesting... Uh, 
thing to look at. Uh, we've got the road, we've got the ground signal. It's a claggy one five six. Mm. Double check that we're actually going to the right line here. <laughs> Going all the way down there. Yeah, we're good. We're set. One nine five would be nice to see, but it's not something that we are actively pursuing or looking to do. all our uh, internal resources our um, everything we've got is all put into TSW I mean if, if someone was to produce a 195 and would like to um, obviously approach us and wanted to sell one then would it be would be his <laughs> so yeah we, we haven't got uh, any of that that manpower um, within us to uh, unfortunately do that <clears throat> Hello again, Prof. Welcome. Oh, the Have I've not been to the Haverthwaite um, line for years. Absolutely years. We're we're away later on in the year um, for a few nights up um, in Flukeborough, up in the lakes. So we're gonna. Go to the Raven Glass and S uh, Estelle Narrow Gauge Railway, which is one I've never been to, so we're going to do a day out up there. <clears throat> so we need to ensure that we uh, obviously clear the points here. See the difference in of the gradients already. We were literally obviously we just come off that line. How how much difference there is. These signings were redesigned um, just about our era, basically to add, I think, more capacity and I think more fluid in the the way that they handle the freight. A lot of work was done around here, not bridging and stuff. Contaminated material, do not excavate. Painting's lovely, went uh, down there once on the rail tour. All that area, like Dartmouth and that. So we have cleared. We need to go a little bit further, obviously, to. Just make sure that the loco fits. There. 
I should do it. Uh, classic program should have included an activity involving the JT standard 4260 banking and other steam local the Hindle brands. There's many things we could have done. <laughs> to be fair, I wasn't even aware of that. But hopefully maybe someone might um, produce it in the community as a, as a freeware scenario. I'll have to look out for it. I'm after, I'll have to look up on that and see what, uh, what was what, though. Uh, we need to run around the train here and then head to Woodley via Peak Forest. Okay. So we need to uncouple. And we're going to stop in the head shot. So these are the fouling points as well, by the way. So basically don't want to be encroaching over them. Change ends. Them liveries and stuff for the free night here already exist in the game. I believe. All, all there's loads of reskins for the free ninety. They've been done in the free work uh, community. Uh, the gradient from Buxton to Hindlow was about one in sixty mo for majority of that run. Going via run around one, I'm going to stop at run around two. Five mile an hour all the way throughout these uh, sidings. I'm st to be fair. I'm still learning all about um, this route. And the scenario I'm making at the minute is a blue circle cement working with a class thirty-seven from Earl sidings just down to Peak Forest. But when when like it says to Peak Forest, it might not just be Peak Forest. It could go to it here, there, or everywhere. There's a few different areas in there. The class. Um, so, luckily, 
had some help from a friend who used to be the shunt, one of the shunters at Peak Forest uh, until recently he's uh, moved on to do different things now uh, in the rail industry but um, he managed to help us out with what uh, sort of procedures were there because I had no idea how, how they operated or where they do they run round do they shunt into places no, I managed to find that out so he was also quite uh, a big help in the uh, in the development of this uh, project with giving us information and help with like signal and getting photos of signals and stuff for us at semaphores so big big thanks you know who you are I said he's still he wasn't here before actually I don't know if he's still here or not <laughs> he did say he was popping in he did pop in stop the marker just past these points and we'll reverse back I'm not going to change end I'm just going to reverse it keep things moving We're literally straight out of here. Make sure we don't smash into the back of these and we'll couple up and hopefully we'll be more or less on our way. I'll turn the tail lights off in a minute as well. Nope. Oh. oh, we're alright. <laughs> I'll just turn them. Right. Lights off. Uh, I think we actually are good to go. <clears throat> Watch out, we are set correctly here. Technically, we don't actually need to turn off, do we? Although, it is actually set. That is actually set. We need to change that. That's better. You know, it wants to take us via the URS1. No, that's alright now. Sorted. <laughs> totally separate to uh, just trains that pamper, so I'm not going to answer that here. That's nothing to do with uh, JT. You'd have to come and find me on our other, on our side stuff, and I do that extra uh, separate streams. It's 
five mile an hour, drops to uh, 15, uh, sorry, goes up to 15, drops to 10, and then goes to 30. That was, what, that was what was throwing me off a minute ago. I was looking at that, uh, that set of ground signals. It was off, pulled off for us. But at the minute at the time, it was telling us to go that way. We should obviously notice that obviously we were going the wrong on the wrong track. So that sorted that. I think this is my my favourite bit because I'm I'm well into my freight, so I, I I do like this little drive down here. I like both parts. Don't get me wrong, but my my my, uh, my favourite stuff in train simulation is always driving freight. So I, it's so nice to finally uh, have this to drive. And obviously, it's so it's just nice to be able to show it you properly rather than obviously do it in the uh, in the photo format as we do our devlog. It's nice to finally be able to do a stream with it and show it all off properly. It's quite an interesting it's obviously got an interesting history this part of line. It obviously used to be a busy main line. These days obviously just down to a single track. One train up and down at a time. How times change. Ten. So again, this is uh, quite a quite a lot of uh, high steep rock cuttings on this part. So it's, uh, it's rather interesting. Should really be more steam tools. It's an interesting. I mean, can the um, we can't actually get 
across can this they, they have to go down and they'd have to reverse i presume into these sides to obviously continue interesting operation Very, it's a it's a rather dense uh, foliage part of route as well. Very overgrown from what it once was, but obviously the steam loco just come down here. I'm gonna take the steam locos away, and obviously foliage starts growing again. Because back in them days, whenever steam locos would come down, all, all the stuff that shot out of the, the chimneys and that old smoke and up clinkers and that obviously would have burnt stuff back. These days, there's nothing to stop that. First tunnel, this is Ashwood. Ashwood Dale, 100 yards. Old sign there, an old wooden sign, I think it is that. Again, you need to keep control of your uh, brakes here because we're dropping in, <laughs> down in the gradient. It's a 1 in 81 at the minute. I think that platform's actually still there today. I thought they'd have got, I thought they'd gone. I didn't realise they were still there. Two miles to the uh, the curve at Blackwell Mills. Then we'll loop back on ourselves and head up towards Tunstead. This used to have a rail link here. This one, I can't remember what this was called. It used to have a little connection, it used to enter this gate here. And we've got Topley Pipe somewhere up here as well. Again, that used to have a, a connection. It's still there for the, uh, the latest updates on the maps. So, Alright, okay. This is this pick tour. Yeah, pick tour. This is pick tour tunnel and pick tour viaduct.
one of the uh, other things that comes in with the update to Sheffield to Derby is down here especially you can actually hear the track drinks now in the track on the wooden on the wooden sleepers so the track um, we managed to get the, the track to actually reference the sound for the track joints so we've got all that in there now where it didn't used to actually have track joints <laughs> it used to just sound like we're on continuously uh, welded rail so going over, over wooden track you've now got joints uh, tunnels also have occlusions in them now as well so those come in with the updates so again some some nice stuff especially when you go through tunnels you get to actually hear the echo And that's been done like throughout the rest of the route as well where there was tunnels that didn't have it and this is Topley Pike there's a bit of old track just back behind us there's a bit more here look just bits left over and then it used to go into there. We had a, a little industrial shunter in there. Evening Ron, how are we doing? Yeah, it's, it's a very picturesque section of route this, it's, it's lovely. It's, it's easy to see how people enjoy this bit. Dropping down to 20 for this is for the curve now. So many years ago, um, this would have uh, been a triangle junction, so you could have continued onwards towards Matlock, eventually join up with the Midland Main Line up at Ambergate. These days, it's just a, a single curve that just goes around. It's the Monsell Trail, which is up ahead. So it would have been the, the next station that would have... There was a halt somewhere around here. And then the next big station was Monsell Dale. I think it was called Monsell Dale, I think it was. It was not that far ahead, it was literally just up ahead. So if I go into the uh, view up here, you can see obviously where the triangle once was here. So where that top part was there. And the bottom part here. I believe there's a cycle hire shop somewhere around here, and where these buildings are. You can actually you can hire a bike, and you can go off down the trail. I learned that through a video, <laughs> which I watched on a, 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 an urban explorer sort of channel. I watch in the local areas. There used to be an old kiln, uh, a lime kiln, somewhere around here as well. That's obviously long since gone. There is some evidence of kilns a bit further up. Speed does up in a minute, it goes up to 45. I'm very well, cheers, Rom. Glad to be you are there. We're not that far from Tunstead, it's just through this tunnel around the bend. This is Peak Forest Tunnel. This is what I was on about before, how, like at the beginning, the different colours of water. So they, they put dye into the water to obviously deter people from drinking it, thinking it's like fresh. Obviously, all the stuff that was rolled down from the quarries and stuff like that, it's uh, obviously not recommended to drink. So that you've got some green water. <laughs> Which I only learned recently. I didn't. I didn't know that myself. I learned that from Mark.
Millersdale, sorry, not Monsaldale. Millersdale. There's a cafe these days. I've not, I've not ever been. We do have a release date and a price. So the release date we are working towards is this coming Thursday, and the price is twenty one ninety nine. Tunstead's just coming up now. He's on the left. No worries. These are the man-made, I believe these are the man-made tunnels, these. I don't think there was actually ever tunnels here originally. I remember playing on the trains of World Peak Forest Route, I don't think there was ever a tunnel here. So they've, they've added these in. Obviously, like there's access over the top. I'm looking forward to seeing what people put together scenario wise for this. Uh, token sections, uh, books and signal box, and great rocks. Although they don't seem to be putting on this scenario. This isn't one of my scenarios, this one. And this one's one of Mark's scenarios. But technically, they would stop at the uh, signal box at Buxton to come off the Hindlow branch, and then they'll get a token to go into the siding, and then they'll give another do another token stop before they leave to come up this way, and then they'll give the token over at Great Rock signal box just before it goes back to the track. I've still not quite got my head around how the operation works around here. I think what they do is, when a train comes in from the top end, it comes in, runs through the facility, it then goes this way, through all this lot, I think it then goes into these sidings here, they, they do a run round, and then they come back out, and then they depart through this line, and I believe then they come out of the area here, I think. Oh, that's my understanding of it. <laughs> And then they join up down the head. It's a very, um, it's a very complicated area. It takes a little bit of getting used to and sort of learning the area. Uh, yeah, this is where a lot of the photos and like videos and that get taken from up in the hills. I think a lot of um, photographers use sort of up here. There's a van I think there's a walkway that comes up over over the top. And then again down sort of there. I think there's a walkway that goes over the top. Yeah there's a lot of um, good vantage points around here. Yeah, Millersdale, yeah. 
I called it Monsoon Dell for some silly reason. <laughs> uh, again, FPS um, FPS watch currently getting the 60 FPS round here, so on my system. Well, this, this line here is, obviously, there's a bit of fulge, but I'm not sure how frequent it's used. My, my theory might be totally wrong on how the operation works, which I need, I need to find out properly. So I will have a word with my trusted, uh, my trusted friend that knows and used to work around here. But he used to be the Peak Forest shunter, so he, he'll know. Try and figure out how the proper operation actually was done. prominent uh, structure of the area that thing is a very old building it's been there for a long time and there's some modern bits that have been put onto the end of it but for the most part that is uh, it's a fairly uh, fairly old building that not sure how long it's been there but definitely from the steam era He didn't charge me a fee before when I got some information out of him. <laughs> he must have forgot. <laughs> so technically he would stop here for a token change, but it's not in the scenario, so we're just going to carry on. And this uh, single box has been rebuilt over the years. It used to... It didn't used to look like this type. I think it was rebuilt fully. It's uh, also named after a fantastic class 37 as well. Although, although shall I say the 37 was named after the box more like <laughs> in the area. <laughs> So we're climbing at the minute, it's a 1 in 90. One that caught me out and I had no idea of this is this signal. That is actually for our line, even though you'd think it would be for the line on the left with how short that the, the gantry spans over. But no, that is actually for this line. So, when you come drown down here, just be be aware that that is that signal is for this track. <laughs> you think the the gantry cage will come across, or the the, the the platform will come over a bit more? But that is uh, strictly correct. I had a bit of break on that. That's my bad. Yeah, the other one is on the other side. Yeah, it's in the sidings over here. Yeah, that one.
There's the, one of the old kilns. What remains of. There's a lot of atmosphere in the uh, in how this has been built. He's certainly done his own work and research before he's uh, probably put all the detail down. I say he's got a good eye for that for all that sort of stuff. those kilns over there all sorts of evidence of the past there used to be a station as well um, I mean, these days the station I think is um, it's the staff mess room the old station building she's still there today just doesn't uh, obviously see train stop there unless they're doing driver changeovers I believe This is one of the views that everyone knows and always comes to. Which I've been here a few times myself. Park the car just over there. Have a wander. Last time came it was class 37 during the shunting. So it's quite an iconic view, is that? This is where the Simex um, terminal is. You'd basically they shunt the locos down here they then load them up and drag them back out there have been some interesting locos on how to that place as well they've had 37s, they've had 20s, they've had 56s 37716 is it? am I right? was one that's been there a few times as well but heavyweight ones we're going to drop into the tunnel now This tunnel is Dovol's tunnel, which is 2,984 yards. It's a long one. He did. Now I wanted to do a short, a short stint there. I didn't stay for long, but it was there. We've had some interesting locos. Uh, will we have a HVL update before this release? Yes, yeah, so there'll be a Sheffield Derby and a Hope Valley update. Uh, we should plan to go up tomorrow. It was meant to go hopefully today, but 
it got too late in the day for it to go out, so uh, I think the plan is to get that out. It will be sort of early, early on tomorrow, which I think is the plan. Uh, so just keep an eye out. Uh, you'll get an email uh, when that goes live, uh, as always, in the system. That will go out. So if you obviously own them, you'll get an update. We're just taking this up to the uh, the curve at Chinley. We've got to stop there anyway for operational uh, reasons. We've got like 20 minutes to sit there, so that's where we're going to end. So I say tonight we'll just to show this route itself rather than driving along the Hope Valley as well. We've shown that in good good waves over the time. <laughs> It's a long tunnel, but I don't think it's not as long. I don't think as Grindleford. I think that's a longer one. It's a it's a fair it's a fair size. So this is where we go underneath the Buxton line now again. So I'll show you this earlier in the stream. So we travel along the top earlier. They crisscross twice. Uh, once is in when they're in that tunnel. So if I just show you above here, so it goes along the tops there and around, and it's going over the the tunnel. So you see where the track goes into the tunnels over in that dip there. It crosses over the top there as well. So you, it actually crosses it twice. It's quite. Uh, it's, it's an interesting uh, arrangement of the. Uh, Track, to be honest. Now, back in the steam days, there was another station down here as well. There was another chapel on the Frith, I, believe, I think it was called. I'm sure it was chapel on the Frith, chapel on the Frith, or Chin. Uh, I mean, chapel on the Frith Lower or something like that. There was another one, and that went. Also, just one thing to note as well, when you come to, obviously if you do come to purchase this route, you need to ensure that the order you, re you install these important three are, um, will be Sheffield Derby, Peak Forest, and then, uh, no sorry, uh, start again, Sheffield Derby, Hope Valley, and then install Peak Forest after. Peak Forest needs to be the last thing you install in that order because of the way the installation works. The installation on... Um, Peak Forest overwrites some of the Hope Valley stuff. It's just the order it has to be done. Otherwise, you, you run into issues and it, it won't look how it should. It's a very complex way of um, how we have to set the installation process up. Because there's a lot of tiles that encroach each other. There's a lot of cross sections that are very close to each other. So it's in, it is important that Peak Forest is the last thing that you install in the, in the set. Basically, if you've got all all the whole of the series of routes, just install them in the order they were released. You won't go wrong <laughs> that way then. So when you start doing back to front and stuff like that, it all gets a bit complicated and things can go wrong. So obviously this is where the Hope Valley line used to end on the previous uh, route. But there was a couple of little additions Hope Valley before Peak Forest, yeah. You need to do Sheffield Derby, Hope, uh, Hope Valley, then Peak Forest if you're just doing them free. But obviously, if you've got everything, do it in the order of release anyway. So, a little, a little extra addition to the route is that these viaducts on Hope Valley were um, just a generic um, loft. They've now been rebuilt as custom assets uh, for this um, route. Because obviously, it's now a, a, a focus point, so they've actually now been properly custom made. 
Um, so there's all sorts going on here. We've got the strengthening bolts and stuff in there as well. And it's nice to see. I think there was another bridge as well. This one was redone as uh, I think as well. So the, the top was rebuilt for that, and the uh, the the sides as well. Those have re been redone. Big steps. MMA are they the monster wagons? Uh, Panther. The big the big box wagon things. The swordfish wagons are called, don't they? If those ones run about, they are available. They are actually in uh, TS. They've been built by TS Rolling Stock, which is a fairly new developer. If you search for them on Facebook, uh, they've, they've got a load of wagon packs that have been uh, released over the last few weeks and a couple of months. So, there we go. This is where we're uh, leaving the stream this evening. But I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen, guys. If there's any questions whilst I'm still here, do feel free to pop them in the chat whilst I've, uh, I'll, I can dedicate another couple of minutes just to hang the fire. But, um, bear in mind, this route is aiming to be released this coming Thursday. Um, 21 is the, the price for the route. There will be some updates coming uh, tomorrow for Sheffield Derby. And Hope Valley uh, as well. It's, it's nice. I mean, this is obviously the middle of main line has been going for such, such a while, quite a while now. It, it, it started before I started work at JT. Um, and obviously to still see that it's growing still today it's uh, it's great i don't think i, I, I recall um, i think mark was saying that at the time when the um started doing this route middle and main line in general i don't think they actually it was envisaged to be as big as it's actually got so it's it's amazing to see how big it's actually uh, grown I and mean, if you look at the map it's that big now you can't see it in one like burst you've got to crawl, crawl across and it's absolutely massive to do a freight run uh, on this now, because you can actually, essentially, you can actually do a full run from Tunstead, or even Hindlow, Dowlow, and you could actually do the full run around, and I believe you can actually get to Leicester on a working, and I think it'll take you a good three hours or so, maybe even longer, depending on if you have to stop anywhere. So, it'll keep you busy for a good few hours. And I can't wait to start seeing some freight services that get built that will take full advantage of all this. Some really interesting stuff that can be built now. Obviously, you've got all your Manchester stuff as well. There's, there's just so much you can do. You've got Lincoln and down to Leicester. You've got the Airwash. You've got Derby. You've got Derwin, Barra Hill. It's massive. <laughs> it's huge. Thank you very much, though, guys. I see there's not there's no questions that have gone through, so I, I think we've we've managed to cover everything uh, in that respect. Um, to just to quickly finish off um, <clears throat> the manual, uh, I'm just going to give you a couple of. <clears throat> I was going to give you a couple of details until the manual just disappeared. <laughs> That's really helpful. One second, let me... Is it going to let me look? Just before we uh, close things up. Right, there we are. It's opened up again. Uh, where's it gone? So all in all, um, you've got a 17 mile passenger line which runs between Hazel Grove and Buxton. Um, overall the route extension is 25, not 25, I think it's 24 before, it's 25. You've got eight scenarios which are the pay west uh, side, eight of them again. So basically you get the same lot as default. Um, oh, NBA Dratio, no worries, I thought you meant them. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so you, you've got eight scenarios across both. It's quick drive compatible again, as always. Um, yeah, it's huge. <laughs> it's a it's a fun one. 
I'm going to end things there, guys, um, instead of just me waffling on there, because I could talk for England. Uh, I could still be sat here later on in another hour's time, just finding things to talk about. But, no, thank you for joining us this evening. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep your eye out on the website. Again, go to the in-development page for the route. Sign up to the email system. It'll, you'll get a, um, a notification when the, the route goes live, um, all being well this Thursday. And, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time and uh, your questions. It's been an absolute pleasure as always to show you this. We'll be back again next month with something else. No idea what yet. We might do something in the back catalogue. We might have something else new. Who knows where um, things will take us in the, in, the, in the next month. But until then, take it easy, guys. All the best and see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.